Okay, we're gonna do a little thing here. Uh, I've been asked a lot about oil being removed when you remove refrigerant using recovery. Uh, oil coming with the liquid refrigerant that's coming out when you uh, do a recovery. And I usually start my recovery, if the compressor runs, I start it by running the machine and then pulling out of the liquid line. You can see I'm right here in the liquid line. And I'm going to pull refrigerant out of this after it's run for about 15 minutes. And I'm going to put it into this cylinder. Now this cylinder has been evacuated and it's been checked for oil. There's no oil in it at all. So I'm going to pull all the refrigerant I can pull out of this thing in liquid form and see if I get any oil. Now this is a piston compressor and they're a little different from scrolls, but I'll try one with a scroll too. Okay, we're ready to uh, pull the liquid refrigerant out and put it into the cylinder. Everything's pretty much settled down and we'll see how much we get out until it settles out and uh, I'll make a comparison to uh, how much this thing ha actually has in it. I'll get most of it out by pumping it out. Okay, we're sitting there about uh, two pounds seven. This thing takes 4.2 uh, pounds or four pounds two ounces uh, factory charge and with this line set that's probably about what it should have. Now here I'm gonna call this a good uh, our suction pressure is 12.8, head is 133. I was kind of blocking the uh, uh, condenser a little bit to see if I could push a little more out. I've got just about 75% of the refrigerant out of this thing. Now, I'm going to put the refrigerant back in as a gas. That should leave behind any oil that was pulled out with the liquid refrigerant. Okay, now I'm gonna take out of the vapor side and I'm gonna recharge this back into the unit. And when it's done, when it's pulled all the refrigerant that it can pull out of here, the only thing I should have left is a little bit of gaseous refrigerant and oil. So let's see what happens. Okay, I'm just going to let that charge for a while and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, after uh, pulling all the refrigerant out, I'm showing zero ounces, but I'm not going to trust that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this cylinder upside down and leave it upside down for 15, 20 minutes to see if I can get any oil that's in it down to the very bottom and we'll see if there's any oil in it. All right, here we have this cylinder. It's upside down now. I mean, this is, has two valves, a liquid and a gas. But the reason I put it upside down and going opening the gas valve is because the line that goes from the liquid up to the bottom of this uh, cylinder is not especially accurate at getting to small amounts of oil in the bottom. So I have turned it upside down and I'm going to open the gas port and let's see how much oil comes out. Okay. What I'm getting is nothing but gas. The cylinder is upside down. The gas port should be giving any oil. I mean, I've left this thing upside down for about an hour. There's no oil in it at all. I didn't take any oil at all out. When I removed liquid, remember I removed liquid by going to the liquid line and pushing it straight in the cylinder. And I took about 75% of the refrigerant out by uh, going to the liquid line 
and as, as if I'm taking gas out, it doesn't make any difference. It's going to boil out of the oil and leave the oil back in the system. Taking liquid out, you could get oil. Uh, I don't see one drop of oil. Nothing. And that's about as close as I can get on it. I really think when you take these refrigerants out and you take part of them out as liquid, you very seldom get a measurable amount of oil. Had a lot of questions on that. This is my answer to it. Okay, that's all on this one.